No longer Xerxes dreaming of small cottages on the edge of town not far from the great wood. No longer husband, father, friend, worker, companion. No longer working in wood, shaping the skeletal remnants of trees into figural and structural elements for buildings, houses of humans, and houses of God. No longer even a man in any sense of physical differentiation, or perhaps in any sense of that word. Body fallen away, mind fallen away, something else empty and becoming, dancing in a golden wind. Now, only singing, and although he does not sing, the song rings through Xerxes in such a way that he knows that he and the song are becoming each other. Vibration in and of the bones, in and of whatever it is that is. A head runs a long, indistinct hallway. It is unlit, but a dim light seems to emanate from some distant end. Xerxes walks, or moves without walking, towards that ember. For a long time, Everything continues to disintegrate. With no feet beneath him, he feels the final shreds of memories of his physical self flaking away and floating off into the air around him. A warm breeze coming from the far end of the hall strips away his memory at first in bits like ash and then in chunks that skid away across the hallway stones. The hallway, too. At first, poorly lit and ill-defined. becomes even less distinct as he moves along, its shape and definition wavering, melting, and running away into the air behind him as he passes. His own essence seems to be joining the retreating stream, but he does not turn to assess the process. A sense of urgency overtakes him, a feeling that he must reach the end of the hallway before it and he completely disappear. Then, after a long time, the light comes to him as the hallway and the remnants of cells and lives and movement and sound all finally sweep away. And he is afraid. Gazing into the edge of the light, he grasps for something he cannot quite remember. Perhaps a woman's face or a child. He holds himself there on the threshold, realizing that he is terrified of the light, and now he wants to turn and run away from it. But he has no legs, and the hallway is gone. Then he makes one last great effort in himself to scramble away from this place. He reaches for wherever, and his lack of fingers closes on nothing. Finally, he relaxes into the absence of himself, the resultant rushing emptiness. Then he falls, and there is not. And the poem, Father's Dream. <clears throat> we banked desire in leaf mold heaps, edging stubbled hay fields among the rivulets of fleeing morning mice. Cold, wet, ill-tied shoes rubbing off skin above the heels, the tracking grass leaving a green path muddled through the early silver rind. Her gaze, like all the rivers, merged water with moonlight, calling out the stark kindness of wounds, her ache, an ache of worlds and times and sand and more, her hands, her armies, devouring, yielding, dark and golden and removed. Gone home to their beds, scripts and props strewn about a small clearing, ashes remembering nothing. Within me, the injured king calls down stars that never come, seeks eyes he'll never see, thrones of bark and moss, cobweb palaces in the wind. Now, Past blistering, 
the feet bleed just at this familiar part of the road. Still too far out for comfort, taking one still cold breath, looking back over the shoulder at a sinking low red 